Good everybody, welcome at seven o'clock. Uh, welcome to the city council meeting Monday, November 2nd, 2020. Um, tonight uh, is Lady Nina Bush here from Mount Zion Baptist Church. All right. Um, Mr. Welch, would you please uh, lead us in the invocation and pledge? Everybody, please rise. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Lord, on the, on the eve of this election, Lord, and we just ask your blessings upon this city, upon each and every one of us here. We ask your blessings on the proceedings of this meeting that, that the action that we take will be for the betterment of this city and, and for the betterment of each and every one of us here. We ask that tomorrow, this election day, Lord, we ask for peace and, and comfort across the land. We ask that you watch over our public safety, police and fire as, uh, as they go about their duties that they have to do. We ask that your blessings upon the, the, the people in here in, 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 this, in this body tonight, and we ask the blessings on these decisions, and each and every one of us, Lord, as we travel home this evening, watch over us, protect us, and keep us. In your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you, Corky. Uh, item two is agenda changes. We have none. Before we get started, are there, we have an election tomorrow. Is there any candidates here who wish to speak tonight? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Item three is the mayoral report. We have some special guests with us this evening. Um, recognition of Veterans Poppy Day weekend, which is November 7th and 8th. We have Cheryl Waybright. Cindy Monk and Mary Lyon Blackburn. And I'm gonna have uh, Councilman Welch read the proclamation and then invite y'all up to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If y'all, I'll read it up here and then I'll, I'll come down there and, and turn it over to y'all. A proclamation by the mayor of the city of Smyrna, Veterans Day Poppy Weekend. Whereas America is a land of freedom preserved and protected willingly and freely by citizen soldiers, and whereas millions who have answered the call to arms have died on our field of battle, and whereas a nation at peace must be reminded of the price of war and the debt owed to those who have died in war, and whereas the red poppy has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice of lives in all wars, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has pledged to remind America annually of this debt throughout through the distri distribution of the memorial flower. Now, therefore, I, Derek Norton, mayor of the city of Smyrna, Georgia, do hereby proclaim November 7th and 8th, 2020, as Poppy Weekend, and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing the memorial poppy through Veterans Day, November the 11th, 2020. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Smyrna to be affixed upon this the second day of November in the year of our Lord, 2020, Derek Norton. Y'all come on up. And thank you for being here this evening. Good evening. I'm Cindy Monk. This is Cheryl Waywright and Marilyn Blackburn. We're all members of the American Legion Auxiliary for the for Smyrna, and we wanted to read a piece for you tonight. I'll read the first part, Cheryl the second, and Marilyn the third. The Cross and the Poppy. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a noted Canadian physician before the First World War, served with Canada's 1st Brigade Artillery as a surgeon at the field hospital in Belgium in World War I. As he worked within sight of red poppies blooming across old battlefields with fresh graves and after losing a close friend, 
He crafted a uh, poignant testament against war and wasted lives that arguably became the great war's most famous poem, poem in Flanders Field. McCray himself died from disease in 1918, the war's last year. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunrise glow loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. I'll speak a little bit about the relationship with the University of Georgia. University of Georgia professor Miona Michael is credited for giving rise to the use of the poppy as a symbol of remembrance. Working as a YMCA Overseas War Secretary in New York in 1918, she read that John McRae had died and vowed to always wear a red poppy of Flanders Fields in remembrance. She made the first sales of the Flanders Field Memorial Poppy in November 1918. From that point forward, it was her mission to make the poppy the national memorial symbol and inspire the world to return to peace after the war to end all wars. Known as the Poppy Campaign, and that is why we are here, we collect donations and you receive a poppy. Veterans groups around the world have adopted the donation for the poppy to raise funds recognition for veterans and their families. The poppies and its significance are more highly appreciated in the UK and Canada than here in America. We hope to change that as the debt owed to the men and women that gave all for the freedoms we enjoy and that are so often taken for granted. In 1920, the American Legion adopted the Flanders Field Memorial Poppy as their official memorial flower and have distributed them across the United States since 1923. Then, as today, the Legion Poppy and the VFW Buddy Poppy are assembled by disabled and needy veterans. Your donations are greatly appreciated, and Mayor Norton, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Now on. Thank you. As a daughter of a military veteran and a woman who strongly embedded in faith and understand the significance of what the cross means to me, I say this. As any combat veteran will tell you, life and death on the battlefield is often decided by a fraction of time or a fraction of linear measurement. Young men and women in combat with youth on their side think nothing will happen to them. It will be the warrior next to them, but certainly not me. There was one man that walked the earth that knew without any doubt that he was going to die for others. That was Jesus Christ, and a terrible death it was to be on the cross. The death of Jesus was told to us more than 2,000 years before crucifixion. In the Old Testament, and Jesus mentioned his coming death more than once in the New Testament. Like the poppy, the cross is a symbol of remembrance, of sacrifice, and the givings of one's life. For we conduct our Veterans Day poppy distribution on Veterans Day at the Smyrna Center ceremony. Also on Saturday, November 7th, and Sunday, November the 8th, we will host tables at the Kroger on South Cobb, the Kroger on Atlanta Road, and Walmart on East West Connector from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. God bless you. Garvis, is that a hundred? Oh. Oh, okay.
thank you all for being with us. And if, if you do have a donation, uh, you can just come up front and put it in the basket for them. Thank you so much. Also in a mayoral report, I have a few updates on a few things this evening. Um, I want to commend our staff, particularly our public work staff and first responders for their work uh, dealing with the storm that came through here. Um, I know Frank Martin, our public works director, is sitting over there. Um, just a ton of hours put in all night. Uh, a lot of people without power. I think we had eight or 10,000 uh, residents without power. Uh, and they did a tremendous job responding, getting the roads cleared, and now for the next few weeks we'll be uh, cleaning up everything else. I want to let everybody know that you know, there was a lot of frustrated folks. Like, why isn't the city coming out? Why, isn't, why aren't they taking care of this? And they can't come out, and if there's live wires, uh, they, the, the power company has to come out first. And they've been, um, they were stretched pretty thin. So if you didn't get a response or the city came out and left, it wasn't because they were trying to ignore you. It was because they, they, they can't deal with those live wires. So, but I think we've got everything taken care of now. If you have debris in your yard, if you'll just put it on the curb, uh, Public Works will come by and get it. So thank you, Frank and team and, and first responders for all they did. Uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you know we have an election tomorrow. Um, you'll go to your normal polling place. They'll be all open from 7 to 7. Uh, I encourage everybody to get out to vote. And if you're not sure where your polling location is, you can find it on our website at SmyrnaGA.gov. I want to say a couple things about sterigenics. Um, that's been, um, there's been a lot of concern about that plant. It's not, that plant's not in the city of Smyrna, it's just outside, but it has tremendous impact on a lot of our residents who live in the general vicinity. Uh, a lot of concern about air quality there. Um, we had a uh, meeting of our air quality oversight committee a few weeks back, and at that committee meeting, um, we had done some testing, some independent um, testing of air, air samples at 20 or 30 different locations around um, the perimeter of that facility. And uh, the data that was recorded over that time was presented to the Air Quality Oversight Committee by the company who we hired to, to do that uh, data collection. In that meeting, that, that company also made some conclusions about some of the data, the, the, the amount of uh, ethylene oxide that was um, in the air and what that meant as far as um, acceptable levels and, and, and that type of thing. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I don't think there's any acceptable level, really. Um, and so there's some citizens who came to us and said, look, we don't, we don't agree with what they inferred from that data. We'd like the Air Quality Oversight Committee to meet again and listen to some national experts on what they think that data meant. Um, so we're going to meet on November 18th um, here at the community center. Uh, we're going to get uh, some opinions from experts around the country on what they think uh, the parts per billion, I guess it's the measurement that they use for ethylene oxide in the, in the air, what those data samples mean, and then talk about what, what we can do as a city in our purview um, in the legal realm to, to make sure that our citizens are safe. And I commit to you, I'll do everything I can to make sure the air everybody's breathing is, is, is clear and, and clear of, uh, clean of any poisons. Um, I'm excited to announce that uh, beginning in January, we're going to take a page from the city of LaGrange and Troop County and start uh, what we call the Racial Trust Building Initiative, something they started there about five years ago. And it's been uh, a wild success. They started off with 12 people that went through a course and then conversation and then had uh, several meetings each, each and every month uh, from then on. Um, now they've had over 400 people uh, citizens, uh, whether it's business leaders, faith leaders, uh, civic leaders, any citizen that wanted to do it, their council, um, they've gone through this course and then have continued to have conversations to improve uh, race relations in that area. And I want to start that here, and I'm excited about it. Um, if you are interested in participating, uh, please reach out to me or any of the council members. Uh, they're going to be letting me know uh, folks in their wards who would like to participate. I think it's going to be a tremendous uh, win for our community. And then lastly, um, you've heard us talk about Support Smyrna and how successful that's been. You've seen all the yard signs in everybody's yard. This is the program where you can donate and then the proceeds go to those families uh, in need of food during these tough times uh, in the form of um, uh, grocery store gift cards. And, and Penny's done a great job administering that program. 
but I'm proud to announce that we've submitted paperwork to make it its own 501c3, and so we can expand the, the vision Laura and I have is to expand the scope of how we can help people in Smyrna going forward and uh, really grow that organization and, and have it help for years to come. So hopefully that'll be uh, processed by the first of the year and we can get rolling on that. And with that, that concludes my mayoral report. We'll move on to item four, which is land issues, zonings, annexations. The first two will be tabled. I'll read them and then I need a motion to, um, to table. The first one is item A, 2019-440, public hearing zoning request Z19-019. It's a rezoning from NRC and ONI to MU for the development of a 170 unit independent senior living facility and 114 townhomes at a density of 11.85 units per acre, 23.95 acres, landlot 775, 810, and 811 at 2320 Campbell Road with inline communities LLC. This, this item is going to be tabled to the November 16th, 2020 Mayor and Council meeting uh, at the request of the applicant. And may I have a motion to table, please? Motion by Mr. Pickens. May I have a second? Second by Mr. Wheaton. All those in favor, please vote. Approved 7 0. Item B will also be tabled. It's 2020 233. Zoning request Z20 006, rezoning from NS and RM10, conditional for the development of 10 single family attached townhomes at a density of 9.3 units per acre, 1.08 acres, landlot 669 at 3302 Atlanta Road, Edge Line LLC. This item will be tabled to the December 21st, 2020 mayor and council meeting at the request of the applicant. Uh, this is in Mr. Gould's district. Mr. Gould, may I have a motion? Motion to table. Do I have a second by Mr. Welch? All those in favor, please vote. It's approved 7 0. Thank you. All right, item C 2020 125 is a public hearing zoning request Z20 004, rezoning from RM10 and R15 to RM10 conditional for the development of 11 single family detached homes at a density of 6.96 units per acre. 1.6 acres, land lot 487, 3655 Love Street, 1080 and 1096 Church Street. It's the Martinello Group, LLC. Mr. Bennett, background, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Martinello Group, LLC, is seeking approval of a rezoning for an assemblage of 1080 and 1096 Church Street and 3655 Love Street from RM10 and R15 to RM10 conditional for the development of 12 single family detached residences at a density of 7.5 units per acre. The applicant is proposing to demolish the three existing single family structures and then subdivide the parcel into 11 lots to construct 11 individual single family residences. The proposed lots will be a minimum 3,163 square feet in area. The homes will face a public street with front entry garages uh, the applicant has submitted building elevations and floor plans for each home in the rezoning application. The applicant proposes to use brick, stone, and siding for the facade materials for each home. Community development considers the rezoning to be a special circumstance since the property is currently zoned RM10 for the majority of the assemblage, which is primarily designed for multifamily buildings with multiple stories that occupy less land area. With the rezoning, there is the opportunity to build 11 single family homes that will provide a transition between the single family detached homes along Church Street and multi-family apartments along Midland Street. Although the lot widths are below the 100 foot minimum, the site plan maintains a separation of 10 foot between 10 feet between houses. Community development believes the special conditions of this specific lot are a unique opportunity and overall benefit to the city. Community development would not have supported the variances considered in this request had the property not already been zoned RM10. The planning board voted to deny the request by a vote of 7-0 at the September 14, 2020 meeting due to concerns about the internal street geometry. The applicant has revised the plan to address that concern from the board and the public comments. Proposed development against the zoning standards of the recent nearby rezonings and I'm sorry, let me go back. Community development has reviewed the proposed development against the zoning standards of the recent nearby rezonings and found the proposed development to be compatible. 
the demolition of the existing single family homes and construction of the 11 single family homes results in a density of 6.96 units per acre on the subject property. The applicant is requesting a rezoning from RM10 and R15 to RM10 conditional and the proposed zoning is in line with the infill development patterns for the neighborhood. The development requires a change in land use from MDR to MHDR. Community development recommends approval of the rezoning from RM10 and R15 to RM10 conditional for the de development of 11 single family units at a density of 6.96 units per acre. Mr. Bob, you have a comment? Thank, thank you, Mr. Bennett. It's in Mr. Lindley's district. I'm sure he'll turn it over to Joey for presentation. Yes, sir. Joey, can you uh, present your findings? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Joey Stobbs, Planner 2 with Community Development. His computer will work in a minute. Okay. Computer went to sleep right before we came up here. Bear with us for some technical issues. Computers are dead. Oh, they're good. Oh, they're great. All right, good evening. Joey Saul, Planner 2, Community Development. This is rezoning case C20-004. Applicant is Martinella Group, LLC. This was heard by the Planning Board on September 14th. They recommend a denial by a vote of 7 0, ge generally based on the street geometry of the internal street. The subject property is an assemblage of three properties. 1080 Church Street is the, the largest part. Um, there's two R15 portions that e equal about 20,000 square feet in area that uh, they're proposing to assemble for 11 new single family detached houses. Current zoning is RM10 and R15 and the proposed zoning is RM10 conditional. Surrounding the property is R15, RDA and then a residential townhome. The land use for the property is medium density residential. However, since it's already zoned uh, RM10 which allows 10 units per acre, the land use uh, should be changed to medium high density residential, which would allow th that type of density. This is the proposed site plan. Uh, they're requesting front setback of 10 feet. That's the internal front setback on the public road. Side setback of five feet. Uh, long Church Street setback of 20 feet and a rear setback of 20 feet. There's a proposed 10-foot landscape buffer around the property to buffer the, the adjacent properties. There will be a new public road with a cul-de-sac at the end. And the stormwater detention facility is in the back corner of the property. There will be two crosswalks, one across the, uh, the new the road and then one across Church Street. And then there are uh, providing right-of-way dedication and there will be road improvements for sidewalk and uh, curb and gutter. There are uh, five variances associated with this request, generally because it's, it's zoned to multifamily zoning, which usually incorporates a single multi-story building, not single family detached units. So uh, these are the variances requested 
reduction of minimum lot size from 12,000 square feet to 3,163 square feet, reduction of minimum lot width from 100 feet to 45 feet, reduction of front setback from 50 feet to 10 feet, reduction of rear setback from 40 feet to 20 feet, and reduction of side setback from 35 feet to 5 feet. And the staff does support uh, those variances. These are uh, proposed home elevations and then pictures of subject uh, of the existing subject property and the adjacent properties. Again, staff is recommending approval of the rezoning to RM10 conditional for development of 11 single family beach type units at a density of 6.96 units per acre with the following conditions. One, regarding the architectural components. Two, for utilities underground. Three, requiring protective covenants. Four, requiring the detention pond to be screened. Uh, five, making the developer responsible for any traffic improvements. Six, requiring a um, brick paved concrete along the entrance. Seven, uh, requiring the um, the road be built to public standards, eight uh, requiring debris, no debris to be buried, nine requiring decorative streetlights within development, ten regarding the compliance with the tree ordinance, requiring the tree plan be um, designed by a landscape architect, twelve regarding all yar yards and common areas to be sodded, and then 13 regarding the planting of the trees scheduled. Special conditions are as follows. 14 re regarding the setbacks already mentioned. Front 20 feet, side 5 feet, street side along Church Street 20 feet, and rear setback of 20 feet. Uh, 15 requiring minimum 22 foot length driveway. 16 requiring identification of right of way along Church Street and requiring the curb gutter and sidewalk be installed on that segment of Church Street. 18, requiring the crosswalks, as mentioned. 19, um, regarding the Church Street road width. And 20, requiring a maximum height of 35 feet. 21 is uh, regarding fire access requirements. 22, water and sewer requirements and 23 stormwater improvement requirements. And the last two, just uh, tying the recommendation to the site plan submitted with the application and the elevation submitted with the application. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Joey? Um, hey, Joey, thank you for that presentation. Um, I want to clarify a couple of things. The um, the driveways, the um, are there an, is there enough our standard um, length there for cars to park? Yes. On the uh, driveways, and then they also will have garages. Did you say? They will um, have garages. Yes. Okay. And then um, is there a sidewalk that goes inside the um, development? There's a sidewalk that runs on the at the eastern side. Okay. Um, okay, I thought that's what that uh, looked like there from like part of the circle and then out to that's that. That's correct. Um, okay. Um, is there a reason that it didn't continue a, a on around the sidewalk? Um, at least at half, uh, you know, in the circle. That's yeah, we only require it to provide access to the development, not to go all the way around. Okay, I knew it, sometimes it was one side, but I was just trying to understand that part of it. Um, okay, thank you. Can, can you explain that just a little bit, the, the sidewalk issue? I mean, it lo looks like to me it, we're, we're taking it like a third of the development in there and then we're stopping. What's the logic behind that? We just require it to provide access to the development and you know, it's running to the deepest slide on that side, to the cul-de-sac. 
Okay. Uh, could we choose to put the sidewalk all the way around? Yeah, the developer would agree to that. Okay. Um, a couple of other issues. You mentioned a minimum 22 foot driveway, yes, sir. but there's a minimum 20 foot setback. Is there a conflict in there? Well, the setback is from the property line. The That's what I thought, but uh, that doesn't look like a 20 foot setback on that drawing. It's about 10 feet up to the property line and then 10 feet to the curb. Okay, was there, is it a 20 foot setback or a 10 foot setback on the front? It's a 10 foot setback on internal front setback. Okay, I, I misunderstood. I thought it was a 20 foot setback on the front. It was 20 foot setback on the rear then? Correct. Okay. Um, is there some reason that it didn't go back to P and Z after they changed this configuration of the road after P and Z turned it down? Generally, if they are reducing density, which they did. Um, we, we don't go back to PNZ. We incorporated the recommendations from the planning board and then just brought it to council. That's generally what we do. If they're going to increase density or change the site plan dramatically, then we would take it back to PNZ. I guess that wasn't dramatic enough to take it back. <laughs> that was pretty dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, I had a similar question actually. It uh, felt pretty dramatic to me too, but so the difference of the what was presented at P and Z, could you elaborate a little bit more about that and, and the implication for what that turnaround radius is there? Yes, sir. The <coughs> the plan that went to P and Z was twelve lots. Instead of a cul de sac, it had a T at the end. The neighborhood really wanted a cul-de-sac to prevent people from turning in and out and not being able to get out. Um, I mean, those are the major changes. Joey, uh, thank you, Mr. Stubbs, for that background. And uh, Mr. Bennett as well, th to, to my colleagues, that there was extensive feedback into the applicant. I see, I think I see them here this evening, and Mr. Mr. Sams. There was significant feedback uh, in response to the PNZ uh, ruling and the applicant got together uh, with a number of those folks as well as uh, myself and some of the folks here on stage. Uh, so I think they have met uh, the, the ask that was before P and Z. So a little bit of background there. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have another question. Um, so the area where the sidewalks are um, on that, I guess it's the east side where the three homes are. Mm -hmm. Are those driveway lengths long enough for a car to park there without blocking the sidewalk? Um, not on those, no, but it's not a public sidewalk, so. It's what? It's not a public sidewalk, <laughs> on, not that the public is going to be walking on. It'll be to access the development. So, I mean, I have concerns about that. If there, that's the only sidewalk for the residents to get out to church and then there there could be cars parked there then they that's gonna i don't know i have concerns about that Joey, I, I would respectfully disagree it's on public right of way it's a public sidewalk uh if, if i'm mistaken please excuse me but i mean it's it, it, if it's on the city's right of way, I would consider it to be a public sidewalk. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm sort of like Susan. I, I really, I, I'm just going to be honest about it. I, I really don't like this this layout, and I really don't like this development. But I understand there are circumstances behind it that, um, you know, the the RM10 and, and the uh, the R15 out there now. The, the other issue is, I, I guess a question that I have, I, I know a part of this property is currently owned by the city of Smyrna. 
are we being we rezoning our property as well as part of this yes sir it is part of the assemblage so we we have we agreed as a as a body to or do we have to agree as a body to to, to apply for a rezoning that I, I i don't know the implications of that can our council answer that question for me i can't see him down there yeah i'm i'm here we've done this before so what we do is we include our property in the rezoning and uh what we did last time uh is after the rezoning and this was i think with the branch development site on Johnsville, we uh withdrew our consent for our property to be included in the rezoning so for now because it's part of the it's part of this project um it's um you know you guys i mean it's it's included in the rezoning but uh and if it's approved that's one thing if it's disapproved then we'll have the the other um scenario like we had before we would withdraw whatever uh authority we gave for our property be property to be included in this project okay thank you any other questions of mr stone Joey, one one question that uh, Rusty explained to me uh, earlier today, but it's it's noteworthy. So, to uh, just to mention it, so the RM10 single minimum lot size for single family homes is twelve thousand square feet, right? Yes, sir. And and these lots are less than four thousand, right? So that's interesting to say the least, right? Sure. But it's interesting because the alternative is we could that lot as RM10 could have a single building. Of multiple units in it right so right. so the single family lot size really doesn't apply to this in the sense that the alternative is one large multifamily building on that property exactly it, it's zoned now for an apartment building of at least 10 or 12 units gotcha. so it could be one building with 10 or 12 units in the one building okay right. thank you right so never a fan of giving a variance of such a large significant degree but the single family home setup is a nice buffer between the current single family development to one side and the other developments on the other side so it's a it's a um, bit of a give and take here so it's wor it's worth exactly. folks worthwhile explaining that to folks who might be listening and to yeah. understand why that's being recommended by staff exactly thank you thank you mr gould any other questions? Okay, I'd like to invite the applicant up, please. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, for the record, my name is Garvey Sams. I think I can clear up a lot of mysteries or questions uh, that, that you may have about this. Um, Good to see you tonight. Uh, my name is Garvis Sams, the law firm of Sams, Larkin, and Huff. And in Marietta, and I represent the Martinello Group, and I have with me tonight Mr. Joe Romano and Mr. Christian Martinello. So we can respond to any questions at the appropriate time, the three of us, or any of us collectively or individually. The discussions on this began a lifetime ago, uh, seriously, in, in December of 2019. We filed our application for rezoning on February 14, pre COVID, obviously. So there's been a, a, a lot of fits and starts and continues and tables and, and, and whatnot. Um, but there's also been some dramatic uh, changes that have been made to the plan, taking into consideration the, the Planning Commission articulation of its position back on September the 14th. There's something that, that I assume from a policy perspective you're, you're aware of, and that is that your, your Planning Commission, uh, it has the latitude to to either recommend intervening classifications or uh, additional add additional stipulations and conditions, but it, they vote either up or down. Um, they don't they don't do either um, a yes with additional stipulations. Um, so we listened to Mr. Bentley, who's the the representative of the Planning Commission. We even corresponded with him, spoke with him afterwards. Uh, we've gotten direction from 
from staff, including uh, some assistance in the, the present design you see of the, of the subdivision. So um, a lot has happened in the past year. To, to answer uh, your question, um, Councilman Welch, regarding the, uh, the property that's owned by the city, um, Mr. Cochran is right. Uh, we've done this on a number of occasions. I'm not familiar with the, with the West Village plan, but uh, Lennar that I represented that was on Sports Avenue, there was a, a piece of property that was rezoned uh, that was a, a city-owned piece of property, and then there was a swap afterwards. In this particular set of circumstances, with respect to the piece that the city owns here, we submitted the uh, letter of intent to Mr. Cochran and the, and the city, and you were copied on that back in, on January the 10th. Uh, you're not obligated to accept the, uh, the provisions of the letter of intent. It, it'll be a negotiation uh, between you as a, as a city council and the mayor and involve uh, your um, city administrator, uh, Chief Bennett, and also uh, primarily central to, to those discussions would be Scott Cochran, the, uh, the city attorney. So that's not novel and it's not new, and we don't take anything for granted that you're going to uh, part with this property for anything less than fair market value, but we have appraisals and, and so things will move forward as a, as a separate and distinct set of circumstances. And if you choose uh, not to approve this rezoning, which we think would be regrettable considering the, the present positioning of the property, then the LOI goes away. Your commitment to do anything, if any, on the, the city-owned piece uh, also dissolves uh, as well. Mr. Stobbs did a good job of setting this up, but, but to go to the existing zoning, it is RM10. There is uh, Medlin Street Apartments across the street at 16.5 units per acre. Now, that's not something that happened under your, under your, your reign, or I guess reign's not the right word. That'd be a monarchy, wouldn't it? That didn't happen un under, your, uh, under your watch, of course. But, but nevertheless, uh, Ms. Wilkinson, to respond to, to your, um, your question, we, we can build a building. We, we can include up to uh, 10 units in that. So we're, in essence, asking for a single-family detached residential subdivision analogous to contiguous um, uh, development uh, as opposed to a multi-story vertical uh, development, uh, an apartment building that would be surface park uh, and I guess it would be garden style apartments. I don't know. We've done a plan just to see if we can physically do that and we can do it without the city property and get 10 units per acre. You don't want to see it. We don't want to do it. Um, and, and that's just the way the properties are. We, we play it as it lies. Um, but, but that being the case, um, I think the, uh, the consensus in this area, and I, I know it's been kind of a hot spot in terms of infrastructure improvements, and I know there's been a lot of interest. And, Mr. Um, Martinello and Mr. Romano have done a good job of talking with the residents, even more so after the, after the, the Planning Commission uh, vote to make sure we had weigh in. And I'm, I'm sure there'll be some that will speak tonight, but I've got a, an additional specific stipulation that goes towards those interests of the contiguous homeowners that we think will mollify them and, and you as well. The, um, the stipulations that, that exist have, have changed by virtue of the Planning Commission's recommendation. and. Each recommendation they had have been incorporated, including instead of a hammerhead, a cul-de-sac, instead of detention as we showed it, detention as it is, instead of uh, the spatial configuration between the homes and the way it'll look uh, from both church and interior-wise, that has changed uh, dramatically as well. So um, dramatically to the extent drama can be created by the change of a street or the addition of one lot, not dramatically enough to send it back to your planning commission. Um, but had, had someone asked, we would have been happy to have done that because we would have addressed every concern that, um, that they raised. This will be a maximum of 11 uh, custom quality built homes. Uh, if you know Mr. Romano, you know his dedication to this community. I represented him for over, over uh, a quarter of a century in, in various rezonings uh, within this sub area and certainly in the city of Smyrna. You know him well. He's probably one of the best citizens the city has in terms of the success of his business and the other endeavors in which he's participated. Mr. Mr. Martinello is, a, is his partner, is a joint venture in this, and, and he's done extensive development uh, in the metropolitan Atlanta area. This is his first in the, in the city, but he and, and Joe will be doing this together. The houses will be a minimum of 2,500 square feet. The price points of those, of course, just by virtue of their size, will range from $450,000 to uh, five. $150,000 and greater. There'll be three to four bedrooms, anywhere from uh, two and a half to three uh, baths. 
architectural style and composition will be as shown, as approved, as uh, endorsed by your staff. Um, this will be conveniently located at Smyrna Market Village. It'll be uh, a walkable community. I think that's what you, you want to see. I don't think you want to see a surface park, multifamily, uh, multi-story residential. Um, but we do have sufficient um, circumstances involved in terms of the length of driveways and, of course, the, there's a stipulation specifically regarding the garages and that will be used for two vehicles. Uh, it will be used for that purpose only and there'll be sufficient room on the, on the driveways, if not with respect to the, to the length, certainly with respect to the width to park two additional, two additional vehicles as well. All these homes will be for sale. This is not a, a rental set of circumstances. Whereas with a, uh, with a multifamily development, the, the, there is no necessarily an association. Sometimes there is, sometimes there are not. But here, this will be a, a mandatory HOA. There'll be, uh, of course, monies that will be paid on a, on a yearly basis by the residents of this. It'll also be run at the outset by a third party management company that'll handle the day-to-day -day operations of the HOA, make sure that that homeowners association is properly insured. Uh, and that it operates sufficiently uh, as, as, as third-party management companies are charged to do. And at the appropriate time, it'll be turned over to the HOA. But that'll be something that'll be um, a decision that will be made internally, and of course, with the acquiescence of your staff as shown in the steps. We've agreed to submit a, a landscape plan, and one of the most recent components of that is a stipulation, a condition I shared with the mayor and, and with Councilman uh, Lindley today, and that is around the perimeter of the property, you can see we've got buffers. Um, those are buffers that are required. Some are 10, some are 15, some are 20. Uh, but in terms of those sections of those buffers that are located in direct contiguity to single family detached homes, uh, we'll plant uh, Leyland cypresses between uh, four to seven feet in height. I've got Leyland cypresses. Um, they're approximately 40 feet high. They exceed the height of my of my house and they grow rapidly. If you'd rather substitute that with cryptomeria to your liking, uh, that's fine with us, but it, it gives the added protection. And it doesn't take away the buffer, it merely enhances the buffers that's already acquired or, or required by your arborist. So both the, the buffer components and the composition of those buffers, uh, but most importantly, uh, now these um, either Leland Cypress or cryptomeria will be um, planted in rows by the, uh, the homeowners with whom um, Mr. Martinello and Mr. Romano have been speaking. Stormwater management, um, you can see that this has been relocated and, and reconfigured on the site, uh, subject to configuration calculations based upon uh, the plan review process. But of course, we submitted a preliminary hydrology report. Um, actually, it may have been a full hydrology report, but anyway, we have pr presented to the city engineer the hydrology components of, the, of this, including the discharge points, and there are no stormwater management concerns, and, and it will not be seen in that it'll be landscaped, that portion of it, which is uh, above ground. The, um, the city, uh, of course, has a, um, a tree preservation replacement ordinance, and we're complying with that. And uh, this will all be sided yards, it'll be irrigated. The, uh, the, the frontage of this on church will have ground-based monument-style signage, the pavers you guys like to like to see, but, but also it'll have, um, with the, uh, the signage, it will be themed with architectural style and composition. There'll be um, lighting within the subdivision that will be decorative and themed to the architectural style and composition, themed to the architecture of the, uh, of the landscaping uh, and the, uh, the entrance monumentation you see as you come in off of church. Uh, in addition to the, uh, the city engineer being provided with a conceptual hydrology study, we have filed, in addition to the revised site plan, most recently submitted, and upon which your recommendations from staff uh, you have tonight, uh, we've submitted a, uh, also a, um, a revised uh, fire apparatus turning plan uh, in and out of the site that was submitted uh, recently as well. And I don't know if Mr. Uh, or Lieutenant Grubal is here tonight, but your assistant fire chief requested that, and we think he's, he's fine with that. I'm, I'm quite certain that Tim would have called me had he not been. Um, so we're, we're submitting to and we're fine with all the recommendations from the Smyrna Fire Marshal's uh, department, including that revised site plan. We have uh, positioned this so that your community development director can make minor modifications as it proceeds through plan review, not granting variances or increasing density or height 
or anything of that nature, but if we had to move a building this way or that or, or juxtapose a, uh, the positioning of a sidewalk for points of ingress and egress, then we'll, we'll do that as well. This evening, we simply ask for you to um, approve the, and, and uh, acquiesce and acknowledge the hard work that's, that's gone into this since September the, the 14th and, um, and also uh, to, to acknowledge, we think what the, the citizenry out there deserves uh, in, in terms of what we understand from their wants and their needs. We tried to address that. And your staff has said, and, and, and I know you trust your professional staff, um, this is a unique set of circumstances, a unique piece of property across from 16.5 acres. And I guess constitutionally there would be some argument that uh, that, that would be appropriate. But we think not. And um, the Community Development Department said it believes that the special conditions of this particular track are a unique opportunity for the city to be able to grasp this opportunity. We agree with that. Uh, and we just ask that you um, approve it, uh, Mr. Mayor and Councilman Lindley, as, um, as we presented tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions of the applicant? Well, um, I have a question looking at the elevations. Um, and I, I believe that the garages are going to be in the front. Is that correct? Yeah, um, we, the, these elevations were submitted. They're, they're not elevations. They're not renderings. They're photographs. And it was to depict the composition, not in, in the architectural style, not necessarily the positioning of the garages. Oh, OK. That's what I was like. I don't see garages no, in the front. No, so. they, these are photographs. Okay, so one's a work in progress, and the other one's an existing house. We wanted to give an idea of the composition and the architectural style as opposed to the positioning of the garages. You'll all be front loaded, two car at all time garages. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Sands? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a public hearing. I'd invite anybody who wants to speak for or against uh, this item to come up and be sworn in by our city attorney, Scott Cochran. All right. Seeing nobody here, uh, we'll close the public hearing and I'll turn it over to Councilman Lindley. This is Councilman Lindley's ward. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, thanks to staff uh, and uh, Mr. Sams for a robust explanation. Uh, the changes, uh, current zoning versus the what's uh, proposed. Um, there was a lot of, lot of chatter uh, and feedback from the neighbors uh, there on Church Street along uh, that quarter. And uh, I think a lot of good dialogue and I think the vast majority uh, of the request uh, and ask were, uh, were made. And with that, I move uh, do pass. I have a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gould. All those in favor, please vote. Okay, it's approved 5-2 with Councilman Welch and Councilman Wilkinson uh, voting in the negative. Thank you. Uh, item five is privileged licenses. We have none. Item six is formal business. 6A 2020-441, approval of FY 2020 final budget amendment. Mr. Bennett, the background, please. Thank you. Negative variances on the budget to actual for expenditures need to be eliminated for report presentation. In addition, the city needs to amend the budget balance for the SPLOST funds. An annual audit of the city's financial statements is required at the conclusion of the fiscal year. In order to close out the year and finalize the financial statements, final adjustments to the budget need to be made to account for various transactions that were not originally budgeted. The city does not need to show negative budget variances for expenditure accounts. Some revenue line items were under budgeted, so they will be increased to off offset the additional expenditure budget need to eliminate the negative variances. In addition, the SPLOST budgets need to be amended to reflect the most current information. The finance staff recommends approval of the final FY 2020 budget amendment. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. We'll turn this over to our uh, budget chairman, uh, Mr. Colkey Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, we received information today, or at least I received information today from our finance director and um, uh, from a from a budget standpoint, it looks like we had um, approximately 2.8 million in in monies that were not expended in the 2019 budget. Now, 
and what what happens is that would roll over into a, and would generally roll over into a, a reserve fund and known as a fund balance. However, uh, with that being said, uh, there were a lot of expenses that due to due to COVID have been delayed, and uh, some of those are going to are going to roll over into this budget instead. But um, nonetheless, we're we're doing the best we can to to continue to to, to be judicious with your your money and your tax money that is paid into the city. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 6A, approval of the FY 2020 financial budget amendment. Any discussion? Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Lindley. All those in favor, please vote. Approved 7-0. Thank you. Item 6B, 2020-451, approval of the 2021 employee insurance providers and plans and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents. Mr. Bennett, the background, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This item is for the annual selection renewal of employee benefits. Every fall, the city must reevaluate and select its insurance advisor broker, insurance plans, and providers for employee benefits, uh, i.e. medical, prescription drug, dental, vision, life, accidental death, death and dismemberment, short-term and long-term disability, and flex spending plans and COBRA administration. The recommendation uh, put forth from staff, number one, change broker of record to Hutchinson Trailer. Hutchinson Trailer is in a unique position to bring the Veracity RX Pharmacy solution to the city. Number two, renewal of medical insurance with Blue Cross Blue Shield keeping the employee contributions and plan design the same for 2021. It's an overall increase of $563,550 to the city. Number three, renewal dental, renewal of dental and vision insurance with current provider Guardian, $0 change to the city. Number four, renewal of life, AD&D, these documents were executed in July 2020 short-term and long-term disability insurance with MetLife, $0 change to the city. Number five, change from RX benefits, express scripts to Veracity RX ProCare RX. The estimated cost savings based on a review of the city's current RX plan is $617,000. Requested action is approval of the 2021 employee insurance advisor broker carriers, providers, and plans, and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Gould, will you handle this agenda item, please? Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As many of you may know through your own health care insurance, it's that time of year to, to re-up for our policies for next year, and the city does a pretty, a very extensive search, and staff uh, uh, um, formed a relationship with Hutchison Trailer, uh, and this group, uh, we, working with Hutchinson Trailer, we would expect to achieve at least a $600,000 per year savings in our prescription drug costs, which obviously is, uh, is significant. Um, so we're, we're excited about this new relationship with, uh, with this agency, and I um, think it'll be uh, a good move for our, our staff, and then of course for our residents just through cost savings. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I move to approve item 6B, 2020-451 as previously read. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Wheaton. All those in favor, please vote. Approved 7-0. Thank you. It's my understanding that that $600,000 savings on the drug side is, is a conservative estimate and could be as much as seven or 800000 so I'm excited about that. Item 7 is commercial building permits, 7A 2020-454, issuance of a commercial building permit for the construction of a new Christian Brothers Automotive at 3278 South Cobb Drive, Carmichael Development, LLC. Mr. Bennett, the background, please. Yes, sir. A commercial building permit has been issued at 3278 South Cobb Drive for the construction of a new 5,496 square foot building for Christian Brothers Automotive. The total estimated cost of the project is $803,557 and Carmichael Development LLC is listed as the general contractor for the project. This is in Mr. Lindley's district. Mr. Lindley. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Bennett. Um, for the folks here in the audience are at home. This is on the side parcel 
uh, adjacent to Kroger there running along Concord Road. Um, so with uh, no further explanation, move, move do pass as presented. Any discussion? Well, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second by Mr. Wagner. All those in favor, please vote. It's approved 7-0. Item eight is the consent agenda. Mr. Bennett, can you please read the consent agenda for council approval? Yes, sir. Item A, 2020-435, approval of the October 19th, 2020 pre-council meeting minutes. Item B, 2020-436, approval of the October 19th, 2020 mayor and council meeting minutes. And item C, 2020-422, approve request for the road closure at San Fernando Drive intersection on the north side of Windy Hill Road beginning November 6, 2020 through November 23, 2020, as requested by Baldwin Paving Company for the construction of a temporary road for a lane shift on the Windy Hill Boulevard project. And this is weather permitting. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Lindley. Second. Seconded by Mr. Welch. All those in favor, please vote. Approved 7-0. Uh, item nine is ward and committee reports, and, and I forgot in my mayoral report to mention, uh, y'all heard us talk about the CARES money we received from the county, and uh, I'm pleased to report that um, the money that we put aside for small business grants for B City of Smyrna businesses, we had over 140 businesses apply for those grants, so we're gonna be able to help a lot of businesses that are struggling uh, in the COVID, COVID environment, so I'm, I'm real pleased to report that. And then the other thing, uh, I just want to let it, you know, remind everybody that we're still in this pandemic. Um, you've seen, if you've been watching any news at all, you've seen not only globally, but specifically here in the U.S., the cases, uh, COVID cases continue to rise. Um, so just please be vigilant and uh, social distance and, and wear your face coverings and hopefully we'll get through this and a, and a vaccine will come uh, sooner rather than later. Um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Pickens. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just give a quick reminder that tomorrow's election day and Ward 1 will be voting at Argyle Elementary. Mr. Wagner. Um, yeah, just the same thing. A reminder that for all of us in Ward 2, if you haven't voted and you're going to vote on election day, our polling place is different this year. Um, so it'll be at Smyrna First Baptist instead of the fire station. So remember that if you're going out to vote and you still have time to turn in your absentee ballots, 7 o'clock tomorrow is the deadline for the drop box. Thanks, Mr. Mr. Lindley. Uh, keeping in uh, common with my two colleagues, tomorrow's please get out and exercise your uh, right to vote. The great news is it sounds like a lot of folks in our community have already voted. Uh, but uh, as I saw when I drove up here for the 3A voting precinct, there is a very large tent outside. So you will be at least covered on a cool day, but uh, encourage everybody to get out and vote. 3B now votes down on the other end of uh, Church Street. So if you're having a hard time figuring out where to vote, please, uh, you can get on the city website and get directions and so forth. Thank you. Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd also encourage everybody to get out and vote. Um, but I also want to say, um, y'all often hear me say that Ward 4 is a very quiet ward and uh, very established and lots of older homes and established neighborhoods and how quiet it is until we had a storm this past weekend. And uh, those old established neighborhoods and old established trees came falling down and I want to commend our public works uh, folks for coming out as soon as the, the the power was turned off they had somebody there to cut the trees off and uh, appreciate all the hard work hard work that they did and uh, with that Mr. Mayor w one last thing Does anybody else feel like it's nine o'clock with that I close he's already left but it's because Mr. Sams is here Ms. Wilkinson. Thank you. So I have several things I'd like to say. Um, I want to en encourage everyone to uh, vote tomorrow and also let people know if they didn't know already that the Ward 5 uh, voting location has changed from Belmont Hills to um, the um, church, Iglesia Pentecostal Church on the corner of uh, South Cobb Drive and Powder Springs 
Street um, on the west side of South Cub Drive. And so I encourage y'all to vote tomorrow. And um, also I'd like to uh, reiterate what Cork, uh, Councilman Welch just said about the uh, older neighborhoods and the trees that came down. And I think Ward 5 experienced uh, quite a few trees that came down too. And um, the Public Works Department has worked really hard in um, getting those the streets cleared up for people. and. Um, that were affected by that, and myself included, um, didn't get my electricity back until Saturday evening. So from Thursday morning to Saturday evening, and uh, also found some friends that were willing to let me store some of our refrigerator things in their freezer. So because things started thawing out, um, and uh, let's see, and then also. Um, I would, there was one other thing I was going to uh, announce, um, but now I'm not remembering that what that was besides voting and, um, and uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Doward. <laughs> okay, I was going to announce that it's my uh, anniversary, 29 years tonight. And <laughs> oh, that's Man, of all the things to forget. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for reminding me, but my wonderful husband is at home cooking dinner uh, for us tonight, and he's a very good cook, and um, I'm uh, thankful for um, our long marriage, and with that, I yield. <laughs> he's going to be so happy you said that. All right, Mr. Gould. <laughs> well, thanks for the good laugh. That's funny. <laughs> Um, a couple of quick things. Uh, Ward 6 is at the voting at the American Legion, so it's moved from uh, Campbell Middle School and we have the American Legion Hall uh, again uh, uh, this uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, also, I want to compliment staff for all the hard work they did and the power outage and trees down and uh, our neighborhood was out until, until Friday, at Friday evening, so we were on a little bit earlier, but I know the Georgia Power crews and their contractors are working, working awfully hard. And then uh, just a quick reminder after the results uh, come in tomorrow, just a good thought for everybody. I mean, half of our city might be disappointed uh, about the results, um, and the other half might not be. So I just say, with the with the current environment on the on the national level, just uh, you know, it'll take some positivity from everybody to know that we're going to be okay moving forward. And that regardless, probably the most Im impactful government that you have in your lives is your local city government. So we're going to be here. Staff's going to be here, and uh, we'll be taking care of you uh, regardless. So with that, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Speaking of positivity in these divided times, you want to talk about the event that was yesterday at the on the green? Yeah, um, uh, community um, uh, United had a uh, really wonderful event uh, outside. About 50 people came, social distance, but uh, to share uh, some positive thoughts um, and uh, I, had, I had a chance to just share some news about the work the city's done uh, around uh, diversity issues and just major. Um, um, uh, activities we've had here that, to benefit and help our, help our residents, um, which is a really, really wonderful event and uh, look forward to having more of these type activities when, uh, when we get, get together in bigger, bigger groups. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Wheaton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a word of appreciation to staff for sure and, and the good number of residents that we had to come out for our uh, Oakdale Road Improvement Project meeting uh, last week. Um, that was a really great turnout. Uh, we had uh, 70 households show up for that virtual uh, call, and uh, we'll be meeting uh, this week as well to review that, that content. Uh, so we'll be uh, communicating out the revised plans based on your awesome feedback, so I really appreciate that. Uh, certainly get out and vote. Um, you know, Take advantage of that opportunity and blessing that we have uh, here as Americans, uh, and make sure you exercise that right. Uh, and with that, I yield. Thank you. Mr. Bennett. Just a happy 29th anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. Wilkinson. And a quick apology to Doward. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cochran. Miss Tina. No. All right. Uh, I item was 10. concentrating on that name of that church. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Item 10 is show cause hearings. Uh, we have none. Item 11 is citizen input. We have two citizens signed up to speak this evening. Alex Bakery, 3459 Shawnee Trail. My first comment tonight is that you get a speaker down here with a timer 
We have no clue where the three minutes goes until we hear from somebody up front. Please, in the future, put a timer here. Secondly, on the referendum that's on the ballot tomorrow, if it passes, Smyrna gets 53 million. I expect this council to have a city town hall meeting, and you can easily do it in here. If it passes, we need to know how the money's being spent. The taxpayer has a right to know how their money's being spent. It was denied on Windy Hill. It was denied on Concord Road. And I understand Windy Hill now is going up to 60 million. And by the way, it's a sad scenario on Windy Hill. The majority of people that use it are from Cobb and Paulding. But we need to have a city town hall meeting to see how this money, if it passes tomorrow, I'm proud to say I voted no on it. The uh, uh, referendum shows some serious questions like 13 million renovating downtown. The only thing downtown is buying food. The streets are fine, properties are fine, yet 13 million, I don't know who came up with this ludicrous figure. 12 million for an aquatic center and library. We need an aqua another aquatic center like a hole in the head. A parking garage for four million? Parking to go where? We've got the Baptist Church at night if people want to park there, as well as behind Atkins Park is a huge parking lot. Another waste of four million. So I have questions on how this is, these people have come up with these figures. I've got the printout. So I expect the people of the city, I consider them, it may sound funny, I feel they're part of the uh, mushroom group, that we're in the dark with no feedback from the council on what's going on with their money. And uh, it's time for open government. We haven't had it in 20 years. So I hope you all uh, have this city town hall meeting, if it does pass tomorrow, where we can ask questions. We don't even know how to ask the questions, because, uh, but I do have the figures, and I'd sure love some answers on how you come up with them. It's called accountability and open government, and I just find the transparency non-existing right now. So please, consider this a city town hall meeting if this referendum on this new splash goes through on the ballot tomorrow. Thank you. And even though you didn't have a timer, you hit right on three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Uh, Mr. Stephen Jones, 2823 Spring Drive. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I just had a couple of comments. One was I had a um, wonderful experience of early voting at the Smyrna Community Center. Uh, I was very grateful to have that option. Um, the Cobb County location on Whitlock, as you may have heard, was very, very busy, which is a good thing, but it only took me 30 minutes to vote. So I'm really grateful. I think the, the, the capacity of the building had a lot to do with it and just and the workers and the directors and everyone in that facility did an excellent job. Very proud of that. My second comment is about three months ago, the council voted on um, approving speed tables for my street. And I wanted to give you an update saying they are working wonderfully. It has slowed down 95% of the cars on our street. The Public Works Department did an excellent job installing them. The white striping, the signs all look great. There's no excuse for cars to not have enough time to slow down if they're gonna slow down. And because um, I was the one that went around and got the petition a um, couple of days after they were installed, I started receiving calls from the neighbors saying thank you, and I wanted to pass those thank yous on to all of you up there. I would like to say to the 5% of the drivers 
that are still speeding on our street, I would say shame on you. Shame on you for breaking the law, for speeding, and putting our neighborhood children in danger. But overall, it it's just the mood of the neighborhood, just how things are just calm. You like breathe a breath, <laughs> fresh air. You would never know until how long you've kind of put up with this until they actually were installed and you realize what a relief it is for cars to be going the normal speed. I would like to say to Councilman Wagner and Councilman Pickens, if you ever have any phone calls or complaints about the speed tables, I would just like to, if you wouldn't mind passing that along to me, I'd just like to be in the in the know on that and be aware. I know there's always that one person that has a low riding car that may complain about it, but I would like to know about those things so I can kind of back you up and support y'all um, in that way. So thank you very much. Thank you. Those are the only two signed up to speak. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? All right. If there's nothing else to be brought before this body, I declare us adjourned at 815. Thank you, everyone.